So we're in Kensington, no, that's Kensington Palace behind me, but I've come for a meeting with an old friend of mine uh, for some albums that I'm mastering for him. So I thought I'd bring Matt, who's holding the camera with us, uh, and then bring you into the meeting so you can see what's going on and we can have a little nosy round. It's Warner Chapel, who are the company. If you don't know what production music is, it's basically the music that you hear now in the background and it's music that goes on to TV adverts that isn't famous music or incidental music, things like that. And so it's music that is uh, used all over the place that isn't like sync music basically. They'll use it on TV shows as background music and what they'll do is they'll compile an album of sound sounding tracks. So for example there might be an album that is Autumn Leaves and it's kind of a feeling of autumn and sounds of that so they might get someone to do some orchestral stuff you might have some kind of drum and bassy type vibe stuff but what you'll do is get someone like Roberto who is a he's kind of director there I think but he's a producer he will commission you as a writer to say okay this is the kind of thing we're going for this is the title this is what I want you to do can you do five tracks of this and it's this sort of style I think the best thing to do is we'll go and meet him now and then we can, I'll have my meeting with him and then we can ask him a few questions about production music and how you can get into it so that you can make money from your music, just not just from commercial, having it in the charts or whatever you want to do with it, but also having it on the back of TV and film stuff. So yeah, let's go and see him. Oh, you are literally filming. Yeah, yeah, all the time. We don't know what we're going to use. Uh, you, might make a, you might make it to the vlog. Uh, oh, uh, go on, Rob. Come on. So, uh, what do you do here for me? So, I do all the marketing side oh, of things. Oh, okay. yeah, so I do all the kind of social media, right. campaigns, anything like that. Sometimes I do design stuff as well. Alright, oh, great. Do I get to steal the mug? Yeah. I only go along to my son's rugby games so that I can steal the mugs from the rugby. <laughs> And it's the, the fun of it is yeah. trying to get the mug out without anyone seeing you. Because you're in the middle of having a full conversation with the parents and then you've got to try, try and like, hide the mug in your jacket. Have you ever been caught though? No, not yet. Oh. Do you want to go downstairs? Do you want to go and have a look? Yeah, let's go and have a nosy at the studio. Yeah. So do you use the studio or not? Uh, What's it yeah. for? Yes, it's like a rehearsal room. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just like a room. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like a room. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So for their writers and stuff like that. Can we go in? Just, I will in. This is quite good, isn't it? said to anybody that's writing music and doing it commercially like I'd say to Matt for example if you're writing music keep instrumental versions keep the stems keep everything because that's stuff where you may not use it as a commercial track you might yeah. or you might try and release it as a commercial track it doesn't go anywhere you don't go anywhere you've got that material you've got like an archive of stuff you can then put that stuff together go to someone like you or your producers and say, here you go, I'm, I'm an EDM, for want of a better term, writer. Here's a load of tracks. Um, are they of any interest to you? And you might say, yeah, okay, well, I quite like that one or that one, or no, it's not really the sort of thing we do. Because a lot of the stuff you do is not formulaic, but it's formulaic in the way that it's two and a half minutes long. It's got, it, it builds, you know, like, like trailer music will build from nothing into a big crescendo, doesn't it? And that's what trailer music's all about. Well, am I right in saying that you're best to hold the music as a collective of music because it, it can be then reused in effect if, 
in scenarios well, like production music? Yeah, yes. And, or and is that, that degrading production music? Well, the, the fact that we don't tend to operate like that, so I will brief someone out. Right, okay. So that's, a, that's obviously a major difference. So to your point, yeah, if you do have a catalogue of music, it doesn't mean that we wouldn't take it, but it has to fit into something. That yeah, yeah, it has to, that's why I say you'd keep the stems, because you'd want to re-edit and like maybe cut it together because you might say, okay, I like the vibe of the track and I like the hook and things, but as a piece of music, you've got 16 bars at the front, which is a load of rubbish. You've got, so you might need to then take it apart and then put it back together again in the format you need. And someone might then say, okay, we have to take the top line off because we just want the bottom bit or we just want the drums out of it or whatever. So it's good to keep those stems, isn't it? You should do this for a living. Oh, <laughs> 25 years in, I've done a lot of your albums. No, I mean, you, you know how I tend to work anyway. I mean, I've always worked very closely with, with writers. And um, I sort of always try and think of it not being sort of... The music that comes in isn't surplus. It's not like just failed no, to no, reach its right, potential yeah. somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. It's been written specifically overall. But to your question, if you do have a body of work which actually holds true then of course when you listen to it I'm, I'm not thinking about it in terms of a commercial release I'm sort of I've got more my head and ears are starting to think or oh, how would that look on, yeah, on, yeah. A, on an advert or a, a trailer or in the show what sort of you know requirements are, are incoming from sales and via marketing as well <laughs> So that's Roberto, uh, we're just on our way back now to the car, I hope you got something out of that. If you want to see the full interview there and the full chat that we had, then go to my Patreon page which is linked below and um, there you can see the full length thing if you're more interested and want to get more info on production music. Um, but apart from that, uh, till next time, bye.